In the previous episode, my crew left me all alone after we had reached the pizza. After a very stressful month with lots of things not going our way, I was finally somewhere completely free to stay with crystal clear waters and protection all around me. My plan now was to finally just relax and take in the chill island life. So this is something that usually happens in the Mediterranean. There are waves from the side compared to the wind. So the entire boat is really uncomfortable staying in. I've decided to row into land and just explore a little because there is no waves on land. <laughs> and then hopefully when I come back, it's a bit more still because I've, I've been here for three days now gathering uh, energy and I finally I was finally motivated to start doing something and then it just doesn't work which is really frustrating uh, but now I'm going to go explore a little hopefully that will cheer me up yeah you see now it starts again being really shaky yeah <laughs> later and uh, there are still some major swelling you can see the boat over there uh, right now it's not that bad but it was really uh, wiggly uh, earlier today you can see this boat um, but mine is not doing quite as bad and it's actually the only one that is faced it you can see every boat is this way while mine is this so just when I had given up I had fixed it really yeah, okay, right now the stern anchor is going down there, but uh, but just earlier it was going down there. And uh, even though it's going under the boat right now, it's holding me in uh, the position I want. It's right against the swell. While the wind is clearly coming from there, I can feel it and you can see it on the boat. Uh, so I'm just in the direction I want to the swelling, which is really nice. Uh, I've walked today like probably more than 10 kilometers to get to the city and back. I uh, don't know what the city is called, but it's like the second biggest city in Ibiza, I believe. But right now I'm going to make pizza, which is going to be amazing. So yesterday I was a complete idiot because I forgot to turn off the ignition thingy I've made to uh, to start the coils of the alternator. Uh, it sat on for eight hours before I went to bed and noticed it was on. Uh, the guy that helped me uh, with the installation of the alternator said that if the ignition is on for more than 45 minutes without the, uh, without the motor running, you basically fuck up the alternator. So I might have to buy a new alternator just because I forgot to turn off that switch. I'm going to try to start the engine now, but I most likely don't have any power to do it anyway. And the solar panels, as I said, don't don't work for some reason. So everything is just happening at the same time right now, which is not cool at all. So yeah, I'm going to try to start it because I smelled it yesterday. It was like probably 80 degrees uh, Celsius on the alternator. Uh, so you could burn yourself on it, but uh, when I turned it off, but it didn't smell burnt. I've burnt motors before and I know how it smells and it didn't smell like that.
Now there should be a noticeable RPM drop when I turn the switch. Okay, the alternator is broken. So funny looking under the floorboards. I just found another fishing rod. Anyone want a fishing rod? <laughs> I have a fishing rod, I don't need it. Here I am removing water from under the bilges. And I thought it was fresh water from the water tank. But uh, some time later I will find out that uh, there is some leak uh, on my engine. Uh, which causes there to come salt water into the boat and I have a pump to pump it out but that's not activated until the water flows over the level you see here. After being in this anchorage for five days and only using a bit of lighting in the night time uh, my batteries is still on 12.5 volts, at least that's what the voltmeter over there is measuring. I got myself one of these, uh, it's an amp meter, that's what we call it in, uh, or if I try to translate it. So the idea here is you hook this, uh, this on a wire and then you can measure the current going through that wire. If there is something wrong with either the solar panels or MPPT charger or whatever, uh, the current won't have anywhere to go to, so there won't be current flowing through the wire. So if I measure in the wire and it says zero amps, that means I can go on and check the solar or whatever. If this shows some amps, there is most likely something else drawing on the boat, and that will be really easy to find, because I can just clap this on every wire and wait until I see what draws. So this one will be nice if my theory works. You know what I realized just now when reading the manual? It's kind of uh, awful because I've been uh, doing uh, electrical physics, uh, studying it. Because uh, if you don't have a varying electric field, you don't have a varying magnetic field, which means that it's re basically very hard to, to measure, uh, which means that I don't think this one can uh, measure DC current, only AC current, and the solar are DC, and the battery is DC. But at least I have a amp meter now. <laughs> Not that I'm going to have a lot of AC stuff to fix, but... Uh, yeah, I'll just use my normal multimeter afterwards. So now I'm investigating what's the problem of the solar and as you can see the MPPT controller is having a green light which means it's working but not an orange blinking light which means it's charging and as you can see on the sky it should clearly be charging right now. <laughs> um, I measured the voltage on this and it was 19.5 uh, this one was that as well and when I wired it in series I got 40 uh, and when I connected everything back together I didn't get I got zero on the MPPT so I think maybe it is when I made these uh, connect connectors here so I'm just gonna I use pliers to get them in place but now I'm gonna use something more powerful and hopefully just smack them together and hopefully it will uh, get electrical con connection.
And there we go. As you can see, it's blinking, which means we're going getting charged back in the batteries. So one of those connections was probably faulty. Uh, you are supposed to use proper tools for those connections, but I just had two that I wanted to install and I'm lazy, sorry, <laughs> or I don't want to buy new tools just for that. Uh, so hopefully it will hold a little longer now. If not, I will know what the problem is immediately. Uh, but I'm not, now I've gone five days without charging. <laughs> no, I've been totally fine. So uh, it's going to be very cool to get power back in the batteries. I'm actually really excited to see how, how far up it goes. <laughs> I've done laundry. But uh, some of them are uh, not really white anymore. Uh, I should buy some white uh, washing detergent. Uh, they In the washing uh, places here you can just pay for some detergent but it doesn't say anything about it. Uh, so I should go buy, buy some of that. So yeah, it's probably already dried. It's been here for 30 minutes. It's really fun. Eh? You see here is my uh, swimming shorts. Uh, when I go for a swim, I just throw it in the sun and after 10 minutes it's dry because it's so hot here. And even if it's no, not sun, you can just throw it in the shade in like one hour and then it's dry. It's such a hot climate. <laughs> it's crazy. I've now been uh, securing this uh, this uh, solar roof a bit better with, uh, with proper ropes. It was a bit wiggly and it's caused a lot of problems. When I got the boat, do you remember? This uh, backstay was rusted because of chafing. Uh, so I pulled it uh, way more front. And uh, because of that, we have had more chafing there. So now I've done it properly where it doesn't touch anything. I'll probably have to switch out this, but it's already UV damaged. So it is due for a change anyways. Uh, and now I've tried this before so I doubt it's gonna work but here up front because uh, now it doesn't look like I have to single hand because I've uh, gotten some crew uh, but this force day here has been really annoying because we have to roll up the Genoa and roll it back out for you to jibe uh, and it is a quick release mechanism here but it's not go going up so I'm going to try to do something about that maybe oil it down like crazy. I've even tried turning this turnbuckle with extreme force and it doesn't want to budge but I've not really tried too much on this I've just not bothered to but I'm gonna try. Yeah <laughs> that's what I was uh, afraid of. <laughs> this one is way more corroded than this one can handle. no good place to, to fasten this. I was thinking maybe use this uh, shackle uh, but there's it's really long uh, back here and if I go behind the mast it's just gonna curl up and be in the way and there's no way up front I can put it without it being in the way. Uh, so right now the plan is to just uh, wait for my crew coming tomorrow and then uh, he can hoist me up the mast and then I'll try to Try to take it down and just store it somewhere. Good morning everyone. So it's blowing a lot today. And uh, I'm joined here today by the new crew Colin. <laughs> We've just been trying to patch the sail now. Uh, first we tried using the duct tape and now we have used actual duct, duct tape. Duct, duct tape. Uh, so hopefully that will hold. Not sure. They didn't have PSP tape in the store. So right now we're really waiting for the winds to die down. Because uh, uh, I want to remove the other part of the Solent. This one is called Solent apparently. Uh, but it's way too, way too wavy right now to do it.
So we have now managed to get down this uh, this solent stay, uh, and I'm gonna store it and uh, and maybe use it to switch out another stay at some point. But I'll need a rigger for that because uh, I will eventually get a get a jib. But right now, uh, while sailing back to Norway, I don't I can't afford it. Uh, so for now, this one is just going in the storage, and now it will be way easier to 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 switch the sail course of the of the uh, Genoa. So we are now finally leaving this uh, bay which I've been staying at for one and a half week. So now we're dragging off the anchor. Now we're starting to get over it. So it, yeah. if it gets really hard, you just put it on the plate. So me and Colin tried duct taping the sail yesterday and like all the way on the top I don't know if you can see the patch but uh, it's holding up quite good uh, so uh, duct tape is definitely a cheap solution to repairing a sail I don't know how long it will last but we'll see so now we're sailing at 4.6 knots and we're trying to tow the dinghy that also works out pretty nice how are you feeling, Colin? Pretty good. For sale? Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like the camera can catch it though. Yeah, there's trouble with the camera sometimes. They just, just don't capture the landscapes. Yeah. It's really cool landscapes. really crazy out there uh, we were bluffing around like or bluff, like the sails were bluffing and laughing like two hours and we were barely moving and then suddenly the wind came back and we started moving really rapidly and then we had to take out like uh, two thirds of the Genoa and we're going in 6.5 knots and it's almost about to reef again and it was it was just dead calm and then just this just started happening but we're almost at our anchorage which is like there somewhere uh, so we're just gonna we're just gonna sail the wind uh, and hope it lasts till there and maybe it will die down again I don't know <laughs> but uh, right now it seems sustainable to have this uh, reef and uh, we're going constantly at between six and seven knots so there's something really interesting we noticed uh, so we were going at uh, we're going about like close hold. It seems like the wind is coming from there. Uh, and what was weird, we just realized uh, I've just put up the keel. So we're basically sailing without a keel, close hold. And I don't understand how that's possible. And like the rudder is basically dead straight. Uh, so everything is really balanced. So and that makes us able to go faster somehow. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but it works, so we're not planning to take down the kill again, because uh, if it works, why not? Uh, but that's really odd, because usually you can't go upwind without the kill. Uh, but right now we're flying upwind, and uh, no kill doesn't seem to be a problem right now. So uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, so what just happened, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, arrived at the anchorage. We uh, were trying to find a spot because it's a little crowded and we backed up over the dinghy, the painter line to the dinghy. Yeah. And it got caught around the, uh, 
propeller. <laughs> so we basically lost our propeller and we had no sails and we were in an anchor and we were drifting towards the rocks. Yeah, just we were, yeah, just over there. And so I had to run and drop the anchor as soon as possible and we stopped about 10 feet short of the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Marius uh, dove down and freed the propeller and now we got a safe uh, anchor here. Yeah, so now I'm standing here in my wet boxer. <laughs> Didn't have time for anything, just threw on the diving goggles and started working. Uh, but now we've gotten uh, a pretty good hold. We just found that sand patch over there, dropped the anchor and uh, dr drifted over here. So now we're on this really popular anchorage. I can understand it, it's really beautiful here some resorts over there and I'm certainly gonna dive here it seems really cool so we're gonna spend at least a night there maybe another day we'll see and uh, yeah it went okay and uh, the prop doesn't seem damaged so yeah. it's fine and we dropped the anchor in time so we didn't hit those rocks yeah. uh, so uh, besides my stupidity for uh, going into uh, into into the <laughs> rope yeah. of the dinghy yeah. uh, I think I executed it good <laughs> The journey continues. For me, I feel like now the journey finally started. Crystal clear waters cruising amongst cruisers. There was less boat problems and more time to take in everything around me. It was nice being joined by Colin. And even though everything seemed very good, I still felt some anxiety when thinking about how far and long I was going to sail and all the crazy things I would soon experience on the journey. But isn't that what life is all about? If you knew everything that were going to happen in the future, haven't you already lived the future then? Just some thoughts before ending the video. See you everyone!